بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعده My brothers and sisters in a beautiful hadith which is in Bukhari and Muslim Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping to attain Allah's reward imanan wa ihtisaban then all his past sins will be forgiven I repeat Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping for the reward of Allah hoping to attain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward then all his past sins will be forgiven and this is in Bukhari and Muslim I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu to enable us to do this and to grant us sincerity and to save us from all forms of uh, riya all from the of showing up uh, and all forms of lack of piety now brothers and sisters i remind myself and you this is such a wonderful opportunity imagine the whole uh, question and thought of getting rebooted Uh, where our whole uh, record and account is cleaned so whatever you and i may have done alhamdulillah uh, as long as we have made amends if and i hopefully didn't hurt anybody and so on because if that happens then you have to seek forgiveness from that person also but if you have not done that whatever else we may have done alhamdulillah if we fast sincerely in ramadan and we beg allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for reward then rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of those sins right now what more can somebody want think about that what more can you want because at the end of the day when we are dying nothing of this dunya matters absolutely i mean nothing of the dunya matters anyway but you know unfortunately we are so um, our mind is so pickled with the Uh, azmat and the glory and the, and and the so called magnificence all of which is false it's just shiny like like you know sometimes you go for a walk on a beach and you suddenly see absolute something absolutely sparkling like a diamond huh? so you might even be forgiven for imagining that somebody's diamond dropped there and you're going to go pick up this kohinoor when you go there it's it's nothing it's a piece of mica uh, on a grain of sand and because the a uh, ray of the sun is striking it at a particular angle uh, this uh, thing is shining it looks like a diamond it's false it is it just it's sand is then the silica it's nothing in it so the point is that this is what the dunya is like anyway but whether or not the the, the the beauty is to recognize it before we die so that we can treat it the way it should be treated with is with which is with disdain not something that you are hungry behind you running behind something which is something of you you know it's, it's like toilet paper right uh, you when you need it you do need it so use it but uh, nobody carries it and and you know keep, keeps it in your in, in next to your you know sort of tight around your neck or something you know because you you love it so much no the the, the this dunya is like that it's it's, it's something to be used so use it for good things inshallah it gets you jannah use it for evil and it'll get you jahannam both ways right so this this thing is like a it's it's, it's something of use hai istemal ki cheez hai koi iski qadar karne ki cheez nahi hai istemal ki cheez hai allah shukr kariye make it's not something to be appreciated and and loved you will appreciate it in the sense that alhamdulillah allah gave you give it to you thank allah subhanahu wa taala for it but not not fall in love with it and this is what ramadan came to do because ramadan holds you back from things which are which are in any case halal so what is that to teach you that that is here to teach us that none of this stuff matters what matters is the rida of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us that um, allah will forgive all sins if you fast with sincerity and requesting and asking allah for his reward allah will forgive all sins because when malakul maut comes when the curtain is lifted that is when the reality of this dunya that this dunya is worthless that all this gold and silver and all the you know power and authority and all the 
a wealth that I had is not worth uh, the, the wing of a mosquito. It's uh, completely and totally useless, uh, especially if I have not spent it in the path of Allah, especially if I have not spent it in, in, in uh, doing good, and if I have just been using it and indulging myself, then this is a, it's a, it's a huge wabal, it's a big uh, problem for me. And that all of this will become abundantly clear when we see Malakul mouth, when we face death. What will become clear also is the real importance of the forgiveness of Allah, the real importance of the good that we do. This will also become clear. Now here, Rasulullah is saying that you fast in Ramadan with... Um, and remember, he said, whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan, so you supposing you start fasting and you die, you haven't completed the month, doesn't matter, you still will have the same reward, which is forgiveness of all your sins. May Allah grant it to us. This is the greatest of uh, rewards that we can get, right? Forgiveness from all sins. So we get a chance to restart our lives. We get a chance to reboot. So that is why I treat this month as a month of rejuvenation, of renewal. And make your niya, this is not like those worthless uh, New Year's resolutions. I'm talking about serious thought, give serious thought to this and say that I am going to, what you're going to do after Ramadan, start it in Ramadan itself. So you say, for example, I'm going to pray all my salah by jama'ah. In the masjid, if I can't pray in the masjid, then at home or wherever, but with people around me. And if I'm, if you are in a situation where there is nobody, then there is nobody. But if there is your family, call them, let them pray together. Uh, and of course, if you are able to go to the masjid, please go to the masjid. The masajid are meant to be kept filled with people. Right? With this COVID and so on and so forth, by all means, please take precautions, uh, you know, maintain your distances and wear masks and so on. But go to the masjid and pray by jama'ah. So make this niya, I will do this. And when will you start? Now, today, just now. Similarly, make the niya to say, I will be more kind. I will not use profanity. I will not yell and scream. I will not lose my temper. I will be good to people. I will give more in charity. And all of this stuff, I will not do, I will not backbite, I will not slander, uh, I will not complain, uh, I will not do anything which has the slightest chance of angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make all of these intentions and when will you do, when will you start doing all this? Right now. Right now. Don't say, when Ramadan finishes, I will do. No, no. Now, now. I will get out of interest-based banking. When will you do that? Right now. Not, don't say after all that. Right now. I used to gamble. I will not gamble. I was a member of a gambling den, otherwise known as a club. I am going to get out. When will you write the resignation letter? Now. Right now. Sit down. Right now. Write the resignation letter. Mail it. I used to drink alcohol. I will stop when? Right now. May Allah forgive us, there are people, and I know such people, who stop drinking alcohol in Ramadan, who will not smoke during the day of the fast, and then the, they, they break the fast, they, their iftar is with a cigarette. What kind of shameless, utterly ridiculous behavior is this? Who are you fooling? You want to fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Please, stop doing these things. Remember, one day you will die. One day I will die. Remember, one day we are going to face Malakul Mouth. And at that time, all of those cigarette packets and those liquor bottles and all those tickets in uh, the gambling dens and all those uh, tickets in the race courses and whatnot are going to become very expensive. They are going to prove extremely expensive and your... your, your, uh, your uh, uh, agreements and uh, contracts with the banks, uh, with your interest-based dealings, believe me, that is the ultimate. That is the ultimate. Please, my brothers and sisters, I beg you, do not do this to yourself. Do not do this to yourself. Get out of all these things. Lead your life only and only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. 
nothing else. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with us and Allah promised to forgive all our sins. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahibi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya